Hi, everybody. Thanks for inviting me over here to KringleCon. I'm very excited to be there, here this year. Um, it's my first year, and I'm going to be presenting information about how attackers use breach data to find and compromise your accounts on the internet. Now, the first part about this is we're going to talk about where we find and breach data, what it is, and then I'll show you how they actually activate and use that to do bad things. But before we do that, introduce myself. I am Micah Hoffman. I have been teaching for SANS for about four years now, and I primarily teach my own class now. It's SEC 487, the open source intelligence class. Six days of open source intelligence gathering and, and analysis. It's actually quite a fun class. Now, I also work for uh, Spotlight InfoSec as a, their primary consultant doing OSINT consulting. In the past, I've done pen testing, I've done incident response, and a whole bunch of other cyber -y type of work as well. If you're interested, catch up with me on Twitter at the username WebReacher. Now, one of the first things we need to talk about is what is a data breach? When a website gets compromised, or a system gets compromised by an attacker, what that attacker will frequently do is go in and take information like usernames, passwords, email addresses, and maybe even more sensitive information like they did in the recent Marriott Starwood guest uh, system breach. There they took everything from passport numbers to credit card information and more. Now, they take this information and then many times they'll post it on the internet for other people to download. And sometimes people will take that information and then do things like replay that username and password across multiple accounts or multiple websites to see if you use that same username and that same password on other sites. Now, we all know that the best practice is to use a password manager along with using a unique username and password for each site, but sometimes Maybe there's accounts out there that you forgot, or maybe you're working with a customer that doesn't want to do that. In those cases, what we can do is we can get smart. We can get smart and find out what information is out there on the internet about ourselves or our customers. The best place to do that is a site that was put together by Troy Hunt in Australia. It's called Have I Been Pwned? Have I Been Pwned? when a breach happens, they grab the list of usernames and email addresses and passwords that were released onto the internet, put it into this database and allow you to search to see if there's a username in there. For instance, if I wanted to check if a username john at example.com was found in any breaches, I can run a quick check here and sure enough, have I been phone says yes, it was found in 41 breach sites and 27 pastes. Now, if we scroll down, we can find out exactly what breaches those that user john at example.com was found in. We see the Adobe breach, anti-public combo list, Apollo, and then the website shows us information about that breach, a little informational blurb here about what happened and the different types of data that was compromised in that breach. For instance, sometimes just emails and passwords are released, but others, as you see here, employer, geographic location, and more can also be accompanying that breach. So if you were going to do this about yourself, you come up here to the, pat the field here, entering your information, search for that, and then you know what breaches were out there. And if it says something like the Adobe breach, whatever username and password you used for the Adobe uh, login or Adobe website, you wanna make sure you didn't use that on other sites. Now, one of the best things about Have I Been Pwned is the notification or notify me up here. If you click that button, you can go ahead and enter in your email addresses, hit I am not a robot. It'll send you an email and you confirm that this is your account. Then every time in the future, when Have I Been Pwned finds a new breach with your data in it, it will email you and say, hey, just wanna let you know this new breach came out and your data was in there so that you can hopefully change your passwords and take action before an attacker does. Now, if you're one of those people that works in a security operations center or is in charge of the mail security for some company or domain, you can also use the domain search. The domain search will allow you to look for and get emails for 
a domain's worth of emails. So if I run webreacher.com and I want to see when anybody at webreacher.com's email gets into Have I Been Pwned, I can go ahead and search for that, that information and then have Have I Been Pwned email me or my security operations center whenever they see that new email at my domain. So those are the positive things. Those are the, the good guys protecting our data, helping get us the actionable information that we can use before a bad guy gets in there and actually starts using it. There are websites out there that can show you this same type of thing and maybe even get you more details. One of them is called spycloud.com. Now, with spycloud.com, I've gone ahead and run a search for the user john at example.com, and I found that he was that his details or that email address's details were found in 426 uh, different records, and it was last exposed one day ago. For the example.com domain, for all users in example.com, we have some larger metrics over here as well. So this site will allow you to see that, but it also will allow you to see other information. For instance, it might sh show you the passwords that you used and other things like that. If you click on this, see full, your full details for free. It'll send you an email to whatever email address you entered into the field. So if I type in jane at example.com, let's see what happened here. We have 21 personal records were exposed and the information's here. So again, this tries to keep a little personal, the information that you are that you might have out there on the web, but there are other places out there where you can purchase some information, and the information that you can buy is uh, information that is exactly what those attackers will get. For instance, if there was a breach of Dropbox, we could search for Barack at whitehouse.gov email address and find that it was in the Dropbox dump or the Adobe dump or the ebony.com dump. And then we click on that record. Over here on the right-hand side, it'll show us the name, the email address, and the actual clear text password. That's what's in the yellow box over there on the right. I've blurred it out to protect the innocent people that, were, that might be using Barack at whitehouse.gov on Ebony.com, in case they haven't changed their password. So this site, dhash.com, will show you the actual password that was in the dump that the attackers might have. But the neat thing about open source intelligence and about this website in particular is that we can actually do searches on passwords. Let's think about this. Now, you've got that really, really um, complicated password that's uppercase, lowercase, numbers, and letters, and it took you a long time to figure it out and to remember it, but you'll remember it. And maybe you use that across multiple websites because, well, it's a very strong password, right? Nobody's going to be able to crack that. What happens sometimes is that on a website, that password will get changed into something called a hash. A hash is a unique value cryptographically changing that string of whatever your strong password is into a hash. That hash will then be stored in the database. Now, what you can do in dehashed is the same type of question to it. Hey, instead of looking for Barack at whitehouse. Actually, what we do is we do search for email, Barack at whitehouse.gov. And then when we click on a record like in Dropbox here, on the right-hand side, instead of just seeing the word password, we now see hashed password. And inside of that yellow box on the right-hand side of the screen, you would normally see the actual password hash. I've again blurted it out. The neat thing that we can do is take that hash of that really complicated, kind of unique password that you have, and then search for that. And when we search for that in dehashed, we find other accounts that have that same password. Now let's think about that. If you use a really strong secure password, and it's something that very few other people use, but you use that password across multiple accounts, then over here, when we search for that hashed password here, or even a really strong password, we can maybe find other accounts of yours that are not related that use that same password. And that might show us other accounts that are out there that are yours. For instance, Barack at whitehouse.gov in Dropbox, might be the actual same person that set up the Mr. President dot the hero 
at gmail.com Gmail account. So you can see that that one's also in Dropbox. In fact, all four of these are on Dropbox. So somebody might have used the exact same password in four different accounts on Dropbox, and we found them by pivoting onto this password hash. So the lesson learned here is one, find out what information is out there. Two, if you use the same password on multiple accounts, people could be using these techniques against you. And three, you should monitor your, your information that's out there and make sure that you're alerted when new stuff comes through. I hope you've enjoyed my brief conversation here about how attackers are using OSINT to target you and your organizations. If you want, come visit our SANS Sec 487 page at sans.org, my blog, webreacher.com, my business, or here are some URLs to those sites that I went to, including an extra one there to set up alerts on the Pastebin site. Thanks very much for having me, and I hope to see you next year at KringleCon.